Yeah, 75% of the time. We're basically going to take um, one seventh or 14.2% of the net income that we show, the controlling parent shows. B says, what is the effect on Posada's financial statement from this sale of the thousand shares? Do we need to show any gain? Are we losing controlling interest? No, we're not losing the controlling interest. So we don't need to show any gain here, but we're gonna need to show that we sold um, some of our stock. Because now we're down to having less of an ownership. So it tells us the equity on Posada reported 1,085,000 equity method balance in the investment and it sells 1,000 shares of 191. So what is the effect on Posada's financial statements from the sale of the 1,000 shares? Do we have to do anything with the income statement? No but we'll have to do something with the equity section. So what are we gonna do with the equity section? Let's look. It tells us that the investment in the company, let me make sure I'm reading this right, Posada reported an equity method balance in the investment of 1,085,000. So we're going to start Posada's investment in the um, sub at book is one million eighty five thousand okay now what do we need to do to show the income that we have attributable to for us, one twenty times the seventy percent times the three four. So I'm going to break it down here. So we're going to take the one twenty times seventy percent times 75% of the time is giving us our 63,000. Then we are gonna take the dividends they paid us. The dividends were 40,000. Net income of 120 and dividends of 40. We're gonna show dividends of 40 times 70% times 75% or twenty one thousand, right? So we increase our income by sixty three, we subtract our dividends, and we also have to subtract our amortization allocation, right? Mm -hmm. And our amortization allocation, how much of it was getting amortized each year? 14,000 here. So we need to figure this out by taking our 14,000 times, what percent do we own? 70% times 75% of the time. Whoops, what did I do? equals 14 times 0.7 times 0.75 or 73.50 is our amortization. So the net difference one million one hundred nineteen thousand six hundred fifty is sitting on our books 
on October 1st, 2013. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, we need to show one seventh of this we're getting rid of, aren't we? So, 14.428, you know, we know that number. So, we're going to show the portion of the investment sold is going to equal this value sitting on our books times our share we're selling or 159,950. How much are we selling it for? It said we sold it for 191. Our basis in it is 159.950. The sales price is 191. So what happens here? We have a gain of 31,050. But we don't have to show a gain because we still have controlling interest. So aren't we going to add this to additional paid in capital? Right? So technically, this 31,050 is excess from selling it. If we don't show a gain, what are we going to do here? We're going to credit the additional paid in capital account for Posada. Remember, we don't show a gain if we still have majority interest or controlling interest. We will show a gain on our books if we lose that controlling interest. So think about it. Normally in a situation like this, we're used to a gain. We'd report the gain. In this case, we're going to still credit it. You know how we credit gains? We're not going to, we're going to credit it, but we're going to credit it to additional paid in capital. Okay? We don't have to show this gain. Make sense? We're the because we're maintaining the controlling ownership. Okay? Now C says, how should Posada report it in its financial statements, the 6,000 shares of Tabitha it continues to hold? We're going to do it the same way. We're just going to show the non-controlling interest now is 40% instead of 30%. We've reduced our shares down to a 60% ownership. Where we did have 70% ownership, we still have controlling interest. We're just going to then show that our non-controlling interest is now 40% instead of 30. Make sense? Any questions on 30 before we go to 37? No, yes. No. We've got one more and then we're out. So, oh, I did screw up. I meant to do pro template 38. So let me. Let me make sure that is, in fact, what I wanted. Just want to make sure this was the right one. Mm -hmm. 
I meant to do 37, guys. I'm sorry. So I'm going to fix this. So I'm going to get rid of that. The 38 template. Number 37. Let me just make sure I don't have a... Four thirty-seven. Okay, so it is on the. Um, I will make sure and add this. Let me add it real quick. Do you guys? How many of you guys have your computers on you? Okay. Well, sometimes it's easier. Chapter four dash thirty-seven. Let me upload this real quick. <coughs> It's a lot easier to do it with the template than not without it. Okay. So, so let's go to the book and number 37. Okay? Number 37. Padre Inc. buys 80% of the outstanding common stock of Sierra Corporation on January 1st, 2015 for 802720 bucks cash. At the acquisition date, Sierra's total fair value, including the non-controlling interest, was assessed at $1,003,400. Although Sierra's book value was only $690. Also, several individual items on Sierra's financial records had fair values that differed from their book values. So we are going to first need to adjust for those um, figures. So let's go here and pull up 437 and it's giving us the information of how much we purchased, the cash we paid for the shares, the assessed fair value, the book value, and then we've got some allocations we need to handle, okay, between the assessed value and the book value. So, oops. Data given. Where's, where are we going to? Hmm. There, 37. So they gave us the information. So let's start with taking this information they gave us about the the book value, the fair value, and the allocations. And let's input that into our system real quick, okay? So we're going to start, what was the acquisition date subsidiary fair value they gave us? One million three thousand four hundred. What was the book value? Two 